So I still haven't got to Columbia yet, but um, there was a traffic slowdown, so I had a chance to look at my paper map. And I noticed just outside of Columbia is Congaree, Congaree National Park. And I remember that park, the name, because that is actually a national park. And I believe there's um, maybe 50 some national parks. And so I flipped open to that page and there it is. Um, 26,000 acres. Let's see, let me tell you a little bit about it. Largest intact old growth bottomland hardwood forest in the United States. Um, among the century's least crowded, country's least crowded parks. Um, folks mostly stick to the northwestern corner of the park near the visitor center, thus missing out on the moss draped tangle of primeval floodplain forest that captivated European explorers in the 16th century. So I think I'll give that a shot. Um, it's a great thing about traveling this way. Um, and the great thing about this paper map, which I, you know, I haven't, when GPS came out, I stopped using paper maps. And wow, this is kind of cool because I, I've worked with Google Maps and you just miss stuff. And this is just on my path. It's a, it's a little ways out of the way, but not much. But what an opportunity to see something new. And here's a quick travel update on uh, the car. So it's been mostly mountains up and down, up and down, but um, did pretty well. So, so far we're 98 miles into the trip and we've averaged 58.2 miles per gallon. I made it to the Congaree National Park. And I just talked to the Welcome Center guy in there and he kind of let me know about camping. So here's how the camping works. They have two camping sites, Longleaf and Bluff. Those are charged, charged uh, campsites. You have to go to recreation.gov or call this number and there's the prices there. But he said that they do have another one, which is the back country. They have another area that's where you backpack in and that's free and you just camp in the wild. Um, but they have a parking lot there and he said I could park there overnight. So I'm going to go down and check it out and see what's there. I made it to the South Cedar Creek Canoe Launch Trail Access. This is where there's um, canoe access. So there is a parking area. Found a nice place to park and I'll let you see where it's at. So it's a pretty big parking lot, but I backed into a kind of a green area. It's a big lot, but it also comes with Toilets, <laughs> that'll be handy. And uh, I'm gonna get settled in, put up my bug screens, uh, change to something a little cooler, and maybe go check out what's on down the road with the creek. All right, so I'm all set up for a mosquito mode. I've got my screens put in both front windows, which are just Velcroed all the way around, and a couple little zip ties in here. I tuck in there and that takes up the slack so there's nothing along here. Got my fan set up, going into the cabin. Since we're, since uh, this is supposedly okay for camping, I'm not putting in anything in the front windshield. I haven't shown you this. I got ordered some, uh, this is bug netting, mosquito netting that goes over a bed. And I kind of chopped it up and put some zip ties on it. And what I made here is a bug enclosure the back and it's black so you, can, you can't see it too much and that allowed me to sit up inside and make my dinner without being pestered by bugs and mosquitoes
Okay, so back on the topic of blending. I got the whole place to myself. Can you see the ghost? Let me zoom in. There it is. Hiding in the shadows. So the visitor center I stopped at is here. Came over and around, and I'm camping right here. And tomorrow I want to go over and walk on the boardwalk here, but I'll show you how big this park is. That's the size of the whole park, and this is actually the smallest, I think, national park. There used to be 35 million acres of old growth floodplain forests. Right now, 99% of this forest is gone. Less than one half of 1%, 11,000 acres, is protected in the park. They were cut for ships, railroads, and buildings, and they were drained for pastures and farms. All that's left is the Congari National Park that protects the long, largest remnant of old growth floodplain forest in the United States. But that area is too small to be seen on this map. So here's some of the wildlife of the forest. You've got the woodpecker, you've got the warbler, and this I thought was kind of funny. Feral hogs dig constantly for food which damages plants and animals in historic sites. Hey, the hogs got to eat too. Uh, we got the dragonfly, butterfly, butterweed, thousand species of moths, hundred species of butterflies, and the fox squirrel, deer, otter, owl, maybe we'll see some fireflies. I'm not going to go looking for the inchworm though. So I think I'll start with some home style buttery potatoes. Microwave. Plus water. And cook. All done. Not a bad way to spend dinner. Okay, so what I had to size down, since I can't have a kitchen, here's the theory. So if I buy a lot of food that is all microwavable, I don't need a sink because I don't need to do dishes. It'll come in its own container. I'll put that in the recycle trash. And there's no cleanup, no dishes, no storage, no pots and pans, no cutting board. And you could argue that it's not gonna be the most healthy e eating, and that's true. But what I'm trying to accomplish here is just do as much as I can with as little as I can. All right, so protein shake is next. So here we have a bag of protein. Flip the bed back. And we have the fridge. Shaker bottle. You can see I have some um, water, some food bars, sodas, milk, cheese, yogurt. And the extra water bottles are stored down here. When I need them, I just put one in there. To, once I finish, put another one there to cool down. So we'll get the milk out. Put the milk in there with the protein. Shake it up. That'll do it. Okay, note to self. Opening a bag of protein powder in a Ziploc bag results in a dust storm of protein powder. So shake is consumed, but then you have to deal, deal with... You know, if you ever had to clean out a shaker bottle of protein powder, it's a mess. A lot of it doesn't dissolve, it sits in there. <clears throat> and cleaning it out is a lot of time. So I put some thought into this. So what I do is, so I'm going to refill this with just milk for next time. I'll put the cap back on, I'll shake it some more, and then I'm going to store this in the cooler. So when I do my next protein shake, I'll have it ready just put the powder in and shake that in and it'll be refrigerated shouldn't have any problems all right it's the end of the day got to walk around have something to eat got to meet the neighbors there's only one other one other van here parking got to meet them very nice people and visit with them it's getting dark it's time to get some sleep and relax hope you enjoyed the day and uh, I do appreciate you watching because I don't know it's interesting you know it's it's a little one-sided but it's it's almost like you're traveling with me and there's something comfort to be comforting about that and uh, I'm enjoying it so I, I can see why people do this so uh, good night and I'll catch you next time <laughs>